tech issues. We're going live into the Successful Bookkeeper Australia. Well, oh, my, oh my goodness. Everyone. And I've got, and I've got, what do you call that? that, that what well, I used to ride a motorbike, I used to have a helmet <laughs> here, and now you have your, um, your headphone here when it kind of you get all these indentations into it. It's all good, Ty. Don't worry, you're all good. <laughs> okay, so we'd like to welcome you, Kerry. Doing my research, I have found out some pretty cool things about you. So I actually cannot believe you're you've been published in Mary Claire magazine you've been the uh, winner of the student of the year in the style institute in 2018 your national styling activations is that right activations mm -hmm. yeah and staff trainer for country road and forever new you've worked with celebrities you've got multiple awards i just feel so grateful that you've been able to give us the time to interview to be able to interview you and pick your brain about style and what all that means for you, but you know, for you and what we can learn from you. Mm. One of your favorite quotes from Edith, uh, Edith Head is, you can have anything you want in life if you dress for it. Absolutely love that. I'd love to hear more about that quote and what inspired you about it, but welcome Kerry Carucci. We're really excited to have you on Power Hour. Amazing. Thanks for having me, Sharon. I'm really excited to be here. Um, I know that there is so much. We were just talking prior to going live. There's so much hype and momentum at the moment because we are just at that kind of change of season. So I think everyone's kind of reaching for, we've gone from winter and things are back to normal now or normal as they need to be. So we're out and about, we're socialising, um, but also, yeah, it's an exciting time to be here. So thanks for having me. Yeah. Nice. Um, <laughs> Okay, so we've got a whole host of questions that we're going to ask you and pick your brain. So for everyone there, thank you, Diane, for joining us. And we've got some people obviously on Facebook then watching. If you'd like to come in um, and be part of this, this is fine. Or you're watching on Facebook in the background, that's fine as well. So you've done a Masters of Advanced Professional Styling in Melbourne, the fashion capital of Australia. You've previously worked as an engineer as well. Can you share a little bit about your journey and the importance of style and the way we dress plays in the way in our day-to-day -day life? Yeah, absolutely. I think my entry into the styling world uh, is quite unique, as you mentioned, Sharon. Um, prior to moving into um, full-time styling, I actually had a previous career in civil engineering. So I not only grew up in a small country town um, in far north Queensland, Mariba, which is about an hour west of Cairns, for those of you on the Upper and Tablelands, beautiful part of the world. Yeah. Um, but it's also something that there isn't a lot up there that when I was quite young, uh, I made the decision to really follow that career. And my corporate career was definitely something that um, I really wanted to invest all that time and energy into. Moved to Brisbane. Um, and just worked with an array of different people, loved what I did. But I think around about the age or around about six or seven years ago, I had one of those like midlife, even though I'm only 33, but midlife sort of like, <laughs> we call it like a quarter of a century crisis. Quarter of a life. Like I, right, yeah, so much. And I kind of really started to look at, you know, what actually gave me and sparked joy? What would I want to be doing for the rest of my life? Um, and fashion and styling, I mean, I had always had it as part of my life. My mum is an incredible dressmaker and fashion designer mm. of a small label of her own. And my fondest memories growing up were, you know, on the floor of her sewing room, being surrounded by, you know, the, all those beautiful fabrics and understanding fit but I think also by growing up in a small country town we didn't have a lot of variety of you know stores and retailers um, at our fingertips so very early on I honestly was trying to like come up with new ways to wear things and you know do those sorts of things when you go into social events so you didn't look the same as everyone else that was buying from the same brand so that whole passion for fashion and style really stemmed from a very early age, but um, it was actually a weekend where the Australian Style Institute, where I did study in Melbourne, they actually come up to Brisbane and had a two-day workshop um, on basically what a stylist does and how to become a stylist. So for me, I actually attended it on behalf of my mum because I was helping her out with a little bit of PR and marketing but it honestly was a weekend that changed my life because it really highlighted, A, that 
stylists aren't just for the rich and famous they're just mm. for everyday people but what I loved about it was I understood then there's so much more to style than just clothes. It's more about the human behavior and the psychology behind how we feel when we put something on, how we step out on a daily basis. And there was so much indication around, I suppose, and why I could relate to it because throughout my career, being a young female in a very male dominated industry, I had a little bit of trouble being taken seriously and being credible because of just you know first impressions right um so I think I related to it even more so because I had what I used to call my armor what I'd Mm. put on on a day-to-day basis and that would be a really well cut blazer and a pair of heels and that would be something that I would feel amazing in feel really confident in and it really comes back down to um, you know, that quote from Edith Head as well. It's like, you can have anything you want in life if you dress for it. And I think a lot of that was a huge catalyst for me very early on in my career. And also led me to the success and being able to, you know, really dominate in that industry. Um, but it just, it was this huge light bulb moment that weekend. And then right. life happened. And then life- I went away, um, went back to engineering in the sense of just going back and I was like, oh, that's that's a great dream, but I don't think that's for me. Um, and then the end of 2017, I made the decision to head down to Melbourne and study my course. And honestly, I haven't looked back since. Look it's, back. Been, wow. it's been an incredible ride, but like many business owners as well, um, it's been a huge uh, lesson of resilience. And, you know, the world has changed in the last few years and having, you know, to navigate what that looks like and especially in my particular um, job and what I do I'm working one-on-one with clients and a lot Mm. of that is in person so you know coming up with different ways to be able to stay front of mind and still be relevant to an industry that's changing very very fast Um, but then also really using technology as well to the advantage which you know allows us to do these sorts of things as well. Absolutely. And that's, I was so like, when I was reading your, um, your bio and sort of getting a feel for your background, I was really drawn to you because you come from that engineering background, which I know is not bookkeeping and accounting, but it's Mm -hmm. kind of similar. And that's what I thought, you know, somebody that's taken a jump and, you know, you were with that career for 10 years. So it's kind of, you're, you're kind of a detailed numbery sort of person, Mm -hmm. an analytical sort of person. And to jump into the field, Field of fashion and design to me I think it's like it's a beautiful kind of um, relationship to be able to share your information now on why you've done that and how um, how it's impacted you and your career and how how you see it impact other women and and men I guess do you do you style men as well yeah yeah Yeah, yeah. yep so yeah so it's kind of um I'm that's why I'm so excited to sort of hear what you've got to say about that because Mm -hmm. I know we've all got a little bit of fear haven't we I think about sort of stepping into the new fashion and I don't want to be too conspicuous and things like that so it's going to be really interesting to hear you sort of unfold how we can really step into it and embrace it and start looking at maybe changing our look up a little bit and I've got a few questions around that so yeah awesome so my first kind of nitty-gritty question is I have a personal belief that anyone can look amazing. And I've thought that since a little girl, I feel like we all can look amazing if we want to, meaning that with the right clothes, the makeup, like kind of our zest for life, and even a little bit of exercise and fitness and what we eat, we can just feel fabulous about ourselves. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I would 100% agree on that, Sharon. Um, the biggest thing that I've learned is that we have an opportunity. I mean, like that when we talk about our daily rituals, mm. we have to we have to get up and we have to get dressed, right? So however that looks as an individual, some people exercise in the morning, some people meditate, you know, some people journal, they have a cup of coffee, whatever that looks like for your daily ritual, getting mm. dressed is a huge part of that because in reality, <laughs> we have to wear clothes. <laughs> Going without <laughs> is just not an option. But I think there is such uh, an, a large opportunity to make that part of our DNA in a sense of, okay, actually looking at who am I as a person? 
one of the biggest questions that I ask all of my clients when we're undertaking a style consultation is, if a stranger was to meet you for the first time, how would you want to be perceived? Oh, and I always, question. because the reason is, is that that is such a huge flow and effect. And by taking a step back and going, okay, how do I actually want to be perceived by someone who's never met me before? And keep in mind that obviously we're living in such a visual world and it's not from a judgmental point of view. It's actually just to gain a little bit more clarity and more yeah, understanding around, okay, who am I as a person? Like, what am I putting out to the world on a day-to-day -day basis? And I think obviously having and, you know, feeling amazing, whether it's makeup, bright clothes, you know, zest of life, your energy, you know, your state. I personally believe that clothing is the easiest way to transform your state. You know, Tony Robbins talks about it very often, but yeah. I have seen that if you've got a wardrobe that is equipped to support your lifestyle and to support you as a person and you put it on and you know how to navigate coming right back to as I mentioned like that armor or your power mm. suit or whatever that looks like it mm. is that huge catalyst um, to show up as the best version mm. yeah nice I'm going to go off script for a minute if that's okay because yeah, well, it just made it sort of sparked my thinking about, like, I know a lot of um, women that I know tend to, especially when they get to kind of my age, you know, the mid to uh, midlife, I suppose, the real midlife, Kerry. <laughs> so around that 45, 55 yeah. age group tend to go to darker colours and to cover and hide. Yeah. And what, because I... My goal for this for this power hour is to try and get people to step out of that comfort zone and to feel... Yeah like a zest for wanting to change and to step into a new sort of style why do you think we do that and what what's a what's a I guess a little tip that you can help us with to help push through that fear of wanting to change it up yeah absolutely it's something that I see so common um mm. with a lot of my female clients and as you mentioned like it is around about you know that sort of age where you've come out the other side and you may have had children or you're kind mm. of through that hard part of your career, all those sorts of things as well. The, the biggest element and commonality that comes through is that as women, we put everyone else's needs in front of our own. So mm. everyone else has got their oxygen masks on first and then you're left very yeah. last. But really by understanding and actually taking a step back and going, okay, what do I want out of life? What does that look like for me? And actually re kind of programming a very long long line of that whole mentality of actually understanding okay what does that look like for me and more common than not you know um reaching for dark colors because you know that's what we know is slimming and those sorts of elements as a board line or things or clothes that are too big um and kind of hiding behind that mm. whether you know it or not but you're actually drawing more attention to yourself by doing that because if you just had something that was very you, very unique, and you felt really comfortable in it, your whole store, state, your aura, just your energy level and that presence that you have would be so much more seamless um, because it would be authentic to you. So it actually just comes right back to, again, how do you want to be perceived? Like how you're showing up right now by wearing dark colours, and those sorts of things is that really the person that you are and it whilst again it seems like a really deep question because our human psychology is so connected to you know who we are as a person our self-image I read um for those of you who are like are watching this back or I don't know if you've read it Sharon um Atomic Habits yeah James <laughs> Clear. Okay, yes. so in the first in the very first chapter he talks about self-image and mm -hmm. basically how that can really like the habits that we have on a day-to-day -day basis is underpinned by our self-image, but also our habits underpin our new self-image. Uh, and oh no. what I really loved about it was that I connected with it with on a very different level because of that understanding. Yeah. And I'm like, ah, oh, I just had this massive aha moment because it's so true that self-image that we have of ourselves. And mm. as women, usually around about that, you know, midlife kind of um, mm. crisis area, mm. Mm. you start to lose yourself. And I think that's where what I find when I am having consultations with um, my clients is that 
when we start asking those really curious and quality questions around, okay, who are you as a person? Like, what do you enjoy? What does your lifestyle look like? How do you want to be perceived? How are you showing up at work? What do you feel most comfortable in? Do you like wearing colour? So all of these questions obviously come into it as part of a stylist when I'm working with someone. But for those of you who are sort of sitting here watching this back and going, okay, well, I don't know if I really love how I'm showing up or what's in my wardrobe or how that's supporting me. It's also asking yourself these quality questions around, you know, no different than when we're, you know, a child and we're like, I love, you know, my favorite colors and I really love that. It really just connects and it might be, you know, purple, it might be blues, it might be whatever that is. Um, actually really getting to that point and asking it for yourself. I think that's probably, yeah, the biggest quality question you could do. Yeah, that's that's really interesting. And I know, I keep, I guess I want to keep going deeper into that and sort of saying, I but I, I don't I don't know the answer to that. Like, I don't know what I like. And I guess, and we will give you an opportunity at the end to talk a little bit yeah. more about how people can connect with you. Yeah, of but course. This is the kind of stuff that you'd be able to go deep into and say, mm. you kind of help people with that answer. Because I, I was like... <laughs> I think I've got a bit of an idea of what I like, but I know like when we're working from home and we're just doing the do and what have have you, sometimes you kind of get stuck into that rat. And it's, do you find that you tease that information out of people a little bit as well? Yeah, absolutely. So it's even consideration of, you know, one of the questions that I do ask clients is, is there someone whose style that you admire Mm. or connect with? You know, that's, that's not to say that we're trying to replicate their style for you but so from a human behavior element there's a part in the back of our brain called our reticular activating system now it controls or acts as a little bit of a filter to all of those crazy amounts of micro moments that we have on a day-to-day basis so whilst it is a large part of how we process information it also creates the subconscious um almost like it's a subconscious like filter and our comfort zone so when you're and the easiest way to compare it is that for example if you've ever gone to um the shops and you're on a bit of a mission and you've left it last minute and you need to find you know a black dress for an event all you will be kind of tuning into is like black dress black dress black dress that's all you will be trying to see you won't see anything else And the same happens with our style. And when we talk about like working from home or you're gravitating towards wearing the same thing all the time, (laughs) Mm. right? Mm. So it's the same thing. It's like, oh, well, I'll just wear that. Like that's kind of, that'll be fine. Yeah. And that's a huge part of it. I've been teaching RAS, the reticular reticular, uh, activated system. I can't even speak, sorry. I've never thought of it, even atomic habits. I've never thought of it through the filter of your eyes and your understanding of like fashion and and style and what have you. So that's really interesting. And it's true. Yeah. You go, when you go out to look for something and you think, yeah, no, I just just get something quick and easy and that I feel comfortable in. And yeah, yeah, I can see how that would absolutely be the case that you're not, you've got those blinkers on, you're not seeing anything else. Yeah. Yeah. But it's also quite powerful because part of the consultation as well, we actually do a bit of an activity that really tunes into your RAS um, because you're actually like drawn to certain combinations subconsciously. So it might be whether you're scrolling on Instagram or maybe you're someone who likes Pinterest or magazines. It's not about, I suppose, that you're looking to celebrities or you're looking to those, you know, famous people for their style and to replicate that. But if you really break it down and probably be, you know, you might be drawn to really beautiful blazer and a pair of jeans and a pair of sneakers or it might be like a really nice flowy dress and it just keeps showing up like there is a bit of a pattern there that Mm. shows for itself yeah okay so you go essentially searching for clues of things that might spark a little bit of interest for you to go down that line definitely definitely nice okay the next question women especially have conversations about the clothes we wear and our body shape and what's age appropriate which is we've kind of talked about a little bit and if we're not having conversations with our friends we're having conversations with ourselves in the mirror about this How does dressing for our shape help us love ourselves more and come across more confident? And is there an age appropriateness when it comes to how we dress? 
So if, um, and if so, what's a good guide or rule of thumb for this? So the first one is how does dressing for our shape help us love ourselves more and come across more confidently? Oh, it's everything. It's, it's yeah. why, it's why I work with incredible clients. It's why I do what I do. Like the reality is, and I say this on a daily basis to clients, we go to school and we're educated or you might be studying at university, actually understanding or being taught how to dress for your body shape is not something that's commonly taught at all. Anyway, mm. you can, and also whilst we have the internet and we have incredible resources, there's also so much information out there that it can be yeah. absolutely overwhelming. Um, you don't know if you're a pair or you're a column and you could be this and you could be that. So whilst um, I do believe in body shapes and understanding what that looks like, I actually like to flip it on its head. I actually work with my clients in their individual proportions. And the reason being is that we may... Uh, seem like we have a particular body shape on paper but when we really break it down you will have individual proportions so for example you might be a traditional hourglass which most yeah. of us would know what that looks like but really you might be quite short through the shoulder to bust line so every time you buy something with straps it's always kind of falling off your shoulders um, yeah, you yeah. might actually have a really short leg line so like different hem lengths and that sweet spot for having something look really incredible on you or where that hem needs to end <coughs> always seems to miss the mark so it's the same token when you understand your individual proportions and body shape combined it is the absolute difference between feeling incredible and confident and having that level of uncertainty or kind of like I think this looks all right like and that's where we have those conversations with our girlfriends our loved ones partners this that yeah. is this okay you know as you walk yeah. out the door or yeah, you're sending yeah. all these like mirror selfies is this going to work for this event yeah. it's the same sort of token yeah I yeah. have never heard of that description of this, just the different portions because I thought that was kind of the rule with the different body shapes so that's yeah. really really interesting and it kind of shows why sometimes you go in and even when you're prepared to you know fork out a fair bit of money like a you know Q or Veronica Main or something like that and you try things on, you go, this doesn't like it. it should work. Yeah. <laughs> like on yeah. paper, it should work, but it doesn't always, does it? Absolutely. And I think it's the same token. Again, coming right back to, you know, we talk about even, so for example, capsule wardrobes. Now, if you ever look it up, and I mean, if you haven't already, I definitely invite you after this call to go and have a bit of a look. So if you like Pinterest capsule it? wardrobe, a capsule wardrobe. So there is actually like a 10 piece rule of thumb what a capsule wardrobe usually is. And it's like a pair of, so it's capsule, C A P S U L E. Oh, capsule, capsule, as in like capsule. I've never yes. heard of that. Before. Really? Okay, oh well, do you go? Definitely Google it. So, what it is, though, across the board, as far as like having, um, you know, like a bit of a guideline, it's like, Every person should have a pair of jeans, a pair of black pants, a white collared shirt, a white t-shirt, a jacket, this, that, etc. whatever the 10 pieces are. The yeah. issue with that is, is that I've had so many clients that have tried to adopt that analogy and they come to me saying, Kerry, I hate wearing jeans. Like I just don't uh. like them. They're really <laughs> uncomfortable. I don't like collared shirts. So all of a sudden they've tried to seek advice, again, Googling and doing that sort of thing. And then it just doesn't feel like them. So yeah. it's more about understanding the same token as your body and your body shape and your proportions, but also understanding what works for you and your lifestyle as a person. You know, I've got women that I work with that they actually don't enjoy wearing pants at all. They'd much rather wear skirts and dresses and have more of that feminine flow. Feminine flow. Whereas on the contrast, I've got some of my clients that love pants, like any shape, give them all the pants. They're just not a fan of dresses. So yeah, it's about finding that happy medium and what that and, is for you. Yeah, and personal, your own personal sort Definitely. of likes and dislikes, which is really nice. Yeah. That's such a nice yeah. way to approach it, I reckon. Thank you. Um, how can we feel fantastic about the way we dress as we age? Yeah, okay. So this is, again, such a common question that I have. Um, it is such a pain point for a lot of women that I work with as well because the reality is that if you look at society as a whole where we're kind of fed all of this different information, like you don't want to be bringing too much attention to yourself by, you know, as the saying goes, 
mutton dressed up as mutton lamb. Mutton dressed up as lamb. Right. <laughs> you don't want to be, you know, dressing too old for your age as well. Have That's a lot it. of, you know, especially you don't want to be dressing like if you're 45, 50, you don't want to be dressing like your mum in that sort of era either. You want to have that level of youthful and really spark that sort of, yeah. you know, individuality, but also joy. Like you should be embracing it. Absolutely. Mm. Um, I believe that people are like aging like fine wine. So it's just finding that happy medium. But understanding what your style is, what you enjoy wearing is the first step. Mm. Secondly, I have a rule of thumb when it comes to age appropriateness. If you love it, wear it. Because there is something about in this undeniable confidence and just energy that when you put something on and you feel amazing with it in it, even if someone else doesn't like it, you can't deny to say, oh my God, you look great. Because there's just, there's something to it. Yeah. That's such a cool rule of thumb because you kind of always second guessing. You're like, oh, is this right? Is that like, is that should, is that fit with my age? But you're right, you know, because you can really, it comes out of people's pores when they're feeling fantastic about themselves. And if the clothes are like feeding into that. That's yeah. pretty cool. I like that yeah. advice. I knew we'd get it. I, I mean, look at you look at um Iris, and I can't say her last oh, name, I can't remember. Right? I She's a hundred. She's a hundred years old. And the things that she wears, I'm like, I would never dream of wearing that. Like, could I pull that off? I'm not sure. But I um I just think like she's the essence of that age appropriateness because there's so much confidence and certainty about her expressing herself that no one's ever going to deny or argue with her. I love it. I've been following that woman for years for the very fact yeah. that I just love her. And for those yeah. that are online that have never heard of her, I, I don't, Iris, that's all I know her as. I, but that's uh, all I know her as as well, definitely. I'm just quickly having a look woman. at it. Yeah. Iris Apfel. Apfel, it is. That's A-P-F-E-L. right. Yes. F-E-L. And she, yes, that's right. She's just turned 100. And for her 100th birthday, did you see her outfit? Incredible, <laughs> right? I was like, what? that's how we won. Yeah. Oh, cool. So that's yeah. a very good example of what you're kind of saying. It's like whatever you feel fantastic in, it, in you're going to shine no matter what. So yeah. go go down that line. That's the rule of thumb. I love Definitely. that. Definitely. And I think though, Sharon, circling right back, it comes back down to when you understand like what your style is and like who you are as a person because you actually ask those quality questions you're going okay how do I want to be perceived like if you want to have that level of just chic effortless like think of Kate Middleton she never looks out of place but yeah. there's, it really comes across that level of effortlessness yeah if that's what you how you want to be perceived then you start to go okay how do I actually incorporate that how do I have a le- more of that timeless style? If you're someone who's super creative, adventurous and wants to have fun and stand out, then you're definitely leaning into that whole iris yeah. scenario where it's a yeah. little bit crazy, but it's just individual, but it's so right because you yeah. feel amazing in it. Yeah, I love it. And Diane McGaffrey, thank you. She said, I love iris at fell, vibrant colours. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. I love them. They're awesome. Okay. Um, Number five, the question is, what are your thoughts on dress and working from home? Should we be more conscious about what we're wearing at home and how this can make us feel? Because it's such a prevalent thing now. Because so many, even though we're all going back, we're still, a lot of us are working from home and will do forever. So, yeah, absolutely. I think um, something that I found. So when back in 2020 March, when everything kind of went a little bit crazy, we went into the first lockdown. I personally had, um, and background story, I'd actually just gone full time into my business at the start of 2020. So prior to that, I was on, I was part time still engineering on project work and then building my business on the side. Um, And there was this level of just chaos and One thing for certain, and this is again for myself that I've experienced, but also reinforce that real connection between the human psychology and our style and how we show up and just that morning ritual. I um, I made a pledge to myself to maintain a level of routine, even though we're in lockdown. So yeah. I actually would get up on a daily basis, get dressed, put on makeup, 
even if I was just working from home or, you know, doing those sorts of things. Because what I noticed in that first week by not doing that, I felt disheveled. I wasn't Mm. concentrating. My state was all out of whack. Yes, things were going a little bit crazy, but it was actually underpinned by I wasn't, I just wasn't getting up, getting dressed and getting on with it. Um, So it's something that I truly believe in, in a sense that, having that level of routine, even though you're working from home, I think personally makes me more productive. It also separates between relax and home life, even if you're in the same space to then actually like, again, switching on and going, right, I'm in work mode now as well. Um, It also kind of allows you to have a bit more flexibility uh, if you need to jump on last minute Zoom calls or, you know, something like that, you know, where it's, very much readily um you know seeing that things can change really quickly you could be navigating and having an email or can we just jump on a zoom call if you're still in your active web pjs that sort of thing yeah Yeah. it's chaos right so yeah i've got to put my hand up for that i mean i do have that routine of getting up putting makeup on and and but i have been caught out where it's like jump on zoom and i'm like yeah sure can you give me five (laughs) Exactly. And it's yeah. true, isn't it? Definitely. Yeah. Which then also comes with a bit of a sideline hack, which I give a lot of my clients as well. Easiest way to kind of look on point and together on a Zoom call when you've had five minutes to spare, especially for the ladies. Um, I always find like a bit of lip gloss or a bright lip automatically yeah. just looks and makes you feel put together. Pop on a pair of earrings or a necklace of some description because at least yeah. that way it looks like you put in a lot of effort yeah yeah (laughs) nice Um, and it's kind of somewhat like to be perfectly honest a little bit more distracting um to you know like if you haven't got a full face of makeup on all those sorts of things as well um and then always like a blazer like I mean it's not everyone's you know go-to for their um personal style but it usually hides and creates a nice structured line on the shoulder Okay. whatever even if you've got active wear on popping on a blazer or Hold a jacket on. or something like that all of a sudden you look yeah on that's, point. that's a great hack I love that awesome I'll yeah. keep that one up my sleeve <laughs> <laughs> okay so based on your professional opinion what is one piece of advice you'd give someone starting to change their look or style for the first time in years and can I just preface that with probably like a lot of our audience that I speak to um, you know, around this age, it's really, really tricky to make that change. We've sort of been doing the same thing, and especially off the two years of COVID that we've had that probably, yeah. you know, not a lot of us have bought new clothes and what have you. So this is a big step for to step out yeah. of that. What would be your suggestion to, to make that first yeah. courageous step? Absolutely. And I mean, and by no means is this uh, a plug for my own businesses or services, but yeah. I truly believe that it's no different than, you know, you need to get your car fixed by a mechanic. You need to see an amazing accountant, financial planner, whatever that looks like. There's a yeah. reason why people are in their profession and that is their craft. Ideally, they that's you know they live, breathe it. That's that level of expertise. I really do implore you to seek out either starting to do a little re- bit of research for yourself to understand, okay, what does that look like what does my style possibly look like um for yourself if you're going to do it for that or just engage with a stylist or someone similar to be able to take that first step what I say to a lot of people that um inquire about my services your first investment is your last investment so the reality is is that it's not only just creating a whole new style for you my um you know, my takeaway for all of my clients, I want to give you as much knowledge about your individual style, your individual proportions that you don't need me in the future. We Mm. actually explore, okay, what does that look like for you? What actually suits your body shape? What works for your features? What colors should you be really working and leaning towards? What you should actually be avoiding or you know, just trying to articulate in very minimal ways. Um, But then also too, like, where do you shop? How do you actually shop? Do you enjoy shopping? Understanding mm-hmm. all of those sorts of elements as well. So I definitely think, yeah, investing in having an expert help you through that journey um, is definitely the easiest and the most efficient way to be able to do that. But 
But if yeah. you are looking at getting started and really just investigating what that looks like, Pinterest is going to be your friend. Yeah, start okay. start pinning things. Pin them in a one board. What you'll come back to if you then, you know, go away, come back after a week, have a look if there is that pattern as to yeah. what you're actually being drawn to. Um, it'll say a lot about where you're kind of going with that next step. Yeah, nice. And I, I do have a question in here. I might just jump to that straight away. Um, yeah, I just that. So off the back of what you've just said then, what's the best transformation you've seen with somebody that you've worked with and how did they feel and what did they say to you? So that that feeling of like, so if if somebody does take the, the step to go and get a stylist or speak with you or whatever, What's the out? What happens at the end? How do they feel? What What's the outcome? Ideally, like it's something that I stand behind, and it's something that it shows up so differently for each person, both men and women that I work with, but always the same sort of outcome. It's just the visual representation of how they want to be perceived, and they feel like the best version of themselves. Yeah, That's- nice. Yeah. And what are some of the comments that people say? Like, what's kind of, so like, is it like, oh, wow, or I didn't think that I could look like that, or oh, wow, like yeah. I'm nervous at what I see, but I kind of like it, or what's the, yeah. what's the kind of gist of that? Oh, so much. Like, I think the reality is, is that there's so much by the time we get to the point that we are um, shopping for new clothes or we're putting together outfits from existing items in um, someone's wardrobe I've already been through or I've spent a substantial amount of time with them going through that style consultation of really getting to know the person that they are and what that looks like and where their pain points are and what that what they actually really visually want to create like that part of my role as a stylist that's what I'm creating I'm creating that visual representation in clothing on their body that works for their body shape works for their lifestyle works for their budget but it's that actual painting picture that they're like I keep coming back to the same thing and that's how I want to like come across and yeah. when you can actually articulate that and they put it on and they feel different but good but they can't understand why and they don't understand what that conversation in the mirror is going on in a sense that is this me I'm not sure do you think this looks okay I think well and the reality is I always ask all my clients because it's not about how you look how do you feel in that does this feel like you they're like it doesn't feel like me (laughs) is that a good thing yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I do. The comments are, are hilarious, especially when you're integrating new trend pieces sometimes as well. Like, yes, wardrobe tables, but you might put something a little bit left of center in there, which I definitely do with all of my clients. Because again, we want to expand that comfort zone and then come back to a little bit more of a happy medium. Um, mm-hmm. I've had things like, I feel like I look like a quilt cover. Um, <laughs> like, And it's just from like little things, right? So people pick up on like colors, it could be textures. The reality is we all have different modalities. So some people are super tactile. I am. I have to touch and feel mm. everything. Other people are super visual. And then other people just really want that level of reassurance to go, okay, so if I wear this, like where do I go in this outfit, Kerry? Yeah, like, okay, so you can wear it here, 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 here. Um, and then we could change it up with this shoe and then we can do this and we can do that. And then all of a sudden they're starting to build this picture of, okay, how does that piece sit in my lifestyle? How does it sit in my wardrobe? Do I wear this to dinner? Like, do I wear this to date night with my husband? Okay, like I do, okay, okay, amazing, yeah. Yeah. You're starting to solve all of those problems that they've currently experienced in the past where their wardrobe hasn't supported them and their style, how they feel about themselves. But it's usually they put it on, they're just like loving themselves. That, yeah, that's that, the part yeah. that I and I get excited and they get excited and everyone's excited and it's yeah it's amazing I'm the best job I really do I love that that's so cool well you're transforming the way people see themselves and what they just you know what they can feel like about themselves that's that's got to feel great to be a part of I reckon so that's awesome um okay so 
Uh, uh, uh. So this is a good question. Do you think how we dress and present ourselves with potential clients and at conferences and those sort of things makes a difference to how people view us and our professionalism? Yeah, 150%. It's the underlying, like ultimately it's a reason I, I do what I do. Um, yeah. And it's also something that um, for me, it's the difference between uh, I'll just mute these people. So you're right. You're it's, a different, <laughs> um, it's the difference between, you know, career progression or, you know, as I say, dress for the job that you want, not the one you have. Yes. Um, oh, but it is, nice. it is more about that level of self-confidence um, of being able to show up, even if you're not ready. So, you know, I work with a lot of young entrepreneurs I work with a lot of executives I work with a lot of you know sort of senior um sort of people that are moving into that next big career yeah. step and it's yeah. something that I'm really really passionate about because a I've been there and b I understand that world to such a huge detail and that level of true understanding of how you can easily navigate it if you do it right Right. Um, and it's the same token for business owners. We are now in such a visual world. You're both online, you're in social media, you're jumping on Zoom calls and the real reality coming right back from a human behavior element and psychology that we have a tenth of a second to make a first impression. Yeah, it's a, that's quick, isn't it? Huh? And it's true, isn't it? We know yeah. ourselves when we look at people. It's so true. You're making that decision straight away. And it's Definitely. subconscious, isn't it? But yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. And I think it's it's not about judgment by any means. It's no. just something that you need to really consider and hold quite high in regard against mm. not only how you're marketing yourself, but also just how you're showing up, whether you're on client calls, you're in client meetings, because people are wanting to build trust with you so quickly. Um, and if they don't get the right vibe, they just won't. And it's yeah. it's ultimately, you know, you have a level of responsibility, I think, personally, like in, for yourself. Um, but then you also have a huge opportunity to cut through your competitors. You have a huge opportunity to really extrapolate the authentic person that you are. Um, and basically, when that happens, there's something magic that happens. And it's happened with a lot of my clients that are in business, yeah, that yeah. things have just gone absolutely crazy and so in alignment to where they're looking at and where they're striving for because they just are completely and utterly themselves yeah and I, I can really um uh understand what you're saying with that because I know a lot of the things that we talk about with bookkeeping is you know know your value when you're pricing and, and those sort of things you've got to price yourself at the at what your value is and it's always for a lot of business owners it's a really hard thing to do because you know we don't want to rip people off we want to do the right thing by people but we also want to make sure that we're doing this to make money as well we're not it's not a charity and if that can feed into helping us know our value and come across more confidently and therefore demand the prices and the you know the type of clients that we want to work with and if our image can help go into that well that's yeah. just a it's like a um I guess a critical non-essential I would call it it's something that it's critical we've got to have it but you know what a lot of us think it's optional and I I don't know if it is that's what I've always sort of said you know it's um it's it's a really important aspect of you know be the best dressed in the room <laughs> and I think yeah. it's a really important thing to be conscious of when we're sort of out looking for new clients looking for new strategic alliances and and new positions yeah. if we, you know for in the career world I'll get everyone to have a think about that are online now if you do have any questions you can type it into the chat or you can you can come off mute in a minute after I've finished I've got a few more questions to ask we've nearly finished that hour's gone very quickly <laughs> If you do have any questions for yourself or Carrie, um, just come have a uh, think about that and I'll invite you to ask the questions in a minute. Um, okay, this is a cool one. How much does um, how we look reflect our bank balance, do you think? Everything. Absolutely mm. everything. Yeah. Um, the reality is coming right back 
to what you mentioned before, self-worth. So I completely and utterly understand where a lot of business owners sit in that regard. And I can relate to it in a few different capacities. Obviously, coming from a corporate background, Mm. your whole value and your worth is placed on a salary and how good you are at your job um, and conforming to KPIs set by someone else. When you move into business, and that was the biggest kind of difference that I needed to adjust personally, but now I can see it and I can relate to a lot of my clients who are business owners. Mm. And you would see it as well as bookkeepers. They see it constantly and you're also showing up. The worth that you actually place on yourself, your expertise and what that looks like is certainly underpinned by our self-image. So when you're showing up and you feel amazing on a day-to-day basis, you're better at your job, you come across with more confidence and that level of confidence and I suppose then social proof because you be providing amazing service to your clients, et cetera, also then reflects it's this huge kind of like infinity sort of shape. Yeah, definitely all interweaved into each other and what that looks like when we, yeah, we talk about our bottom line and being able to, yeah, have the best, life that we're kind of curating for ourselves and in our terms and I definitely think that by showing up having a really great um self-image amazing wardrobe that reflects you yeah it's everything yeah wow wow it's more than what you think isn't it like like navigating this and unfolding all the things that you're saying you just think you kind of think it's a nice thing to have but it's actually quite quite critical isn't it to have this so yeah um uh, 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 okay do you work with people online and if so how can anyone who's interested in catching up with you have a session so is that is that something that you do is online yeah absolutely I mean we can definitely thank COVID for that because we just people are so more receptive now to Zoom consultations and I do Zoom wardrobe edits and I have kind of I have clients all over the country and then into New Zealand as well because obviously we've got the level of technology so uh, if you are interested in finding out more about how we can work together you can head over to my website which is kerrycarucci.com.au um, and it's I'm spelled like- K yeah Put that in. Amazing. um, That's probably the easiest, yeah, Yeah. easiest point of call. And if you are um, wanting to find out a little bit more, like some styling advice, some styling tips, then you can head over to my social platforms, which is all connected on my website as well. Um, The opportunity for, you know, styling reels and all the fun stuff that we now have um, provides a little bit more context and content there as well. Yeah, nice. Thank you so much for that. It's so good that, I I mean, COVID's given us something, hasn't it, with being able to take our businesses, you know, (laughs) Australia and New Zealand wide and to be able to have somebody um, help us with, you know, style advice, you know, anywhere around Australia, that's pretty cool to be able to do that. So awesome. So um, if anyone does have a question, please feel free to come off mute and um, put your camera on and ask the question. If you don't want to do that, you can just type the question in chat. Just while um, we're waiting for that to happen, what's mm-hmm. one or two books that you'd recommend on the subject with the, for the audience to, to sort of dive into to learn a little bit more about this, Kerry? About style in particular. Style and, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I honestly, like I know I've already mentioned it, but Atomic Habits for me was such a groundbreaking um, sort of read. And I've actually read it three times. Oh, is that right? Just wow. that, yeah. Because I think, <laughs> yeah, well, I just, I really connected with it on a lot of different levels because how it obviously really impacts not only our own self image and those sorts of um, elements, but that whole habit forming and being able to recalibrate what we've been taught or you know how we've sort of um always done a few different things it's always been something that not only allows you as a business owner to really start to untap and look at different things um and really learn from it but I think yeah it had a huge impact on me so that's something that I definitely would recommend and especially when you start to really pull out that self-image and how it shows up all the way through incredible yeah yeah um and I did have a look at this, like for the second book that you asked me to recommend. Um, and it's one of those things that I, 
I don't know if I could pin it to a second one. I just don't. But yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> okay. But thanks for trying. No, but yeah. Um, yeah. Atomic Habits is what we like, we talk about it in the um, bookkeeping community all the time, and definitely with my clients, we do talk about it. But it's really interesting that we we look at it through, you know, habits to build a bookkeeping business and all the things that we're doing. It's really lovely to hear from a completely different perspective from from how yeah. you've sort of talked about it. So, yeah, Diane has said this is the second time this week someone has mentioned Atomic Habits. <laughs> it's on my reading list. Yeah, it's amazing, yeah. Diane. It really is. Yeah. So, Incredible. And I guess just quickly before we wrap up, um, mm-hmm. I know we're all kind of addicted to podcasts and things at the moment. So where can we go to learn more about style and fashion and, and what, what's a podcast that you would recommend for us to listen to? Yeah, there's actually, um, and again, not a self-plug, but it is a really incredible um, podcast uh, channel. So it's by Christy Robinson. It's called Run Your Business Like a Boss. Um, okay. And it's really targeted at a lot of small business owners, but there is an interview on there that I have done with her around defining your personal brand. Um, And that's really diving deep into what does that look like from a personal brand point of view as a business owner, but how does that actually show up? How's the connection between that and your personal style? Um, And then really diving a little bit deeper in that human psychology side of things as well. So that's one of them. Because yeah. I've got a, um, a few minutes left, I was it's actually mm. one of the questions that I actually think I accidentally skipped over. But um, I've worked with Jane Anderson, who's a personal branding expert who you would know in Brisbane here. But I know like a lot of people have a, a bit of a challenge to get their head around personal branding and understanding that. And of course, mm. you know, your style is a big part of your personal brand. Are you able to kind of explain what personal brand is and how important it is as a business owner to know what our personal brand is? Yeah, absolutely. The way that I see it is that your personal brand um, is basically a walking, talking business card. So you are your own personal brand. Um, Even if you are working within another company, um, if you're a co-founder of another business, et cetera, your personal brand is something that is completely and utterly stemmed from your own individual um, sort of person that you are. And also it really stems into that DNA side of things as well, because it is such a large part of the person that we are Mm. but also it is that visual sense your personal brand it's not only just your name in the industry it's how you show up it's how you turn up at networking events I know that you said Sharon before like be the best dressed in the room I definitely Mm. believe that but I think there is this level of um, individualism that can be embraced with your personal brand and the level of certainty that paints the picture for your potential clients for peers but it also is the catalyst for you to become you know the thought leader in that particular industry that you're in as well so it's a huge part of it um I think because I work (laughs) with so many of my clients that are in that space that they are looking to transform their personal brand and a lot of inquiries that I get are yes I know you're a stylist but I'm about to move away from this particular industry into a new one and I really need to elevate my personal brand and how that's showing up or they're quite young within their career and they're really looking at you know paving out the next five to ten years of what that looks like for career progression based on what their personal brand is and how they're looking at articulating that Um, because the reality is and like I say to all my clients you never know when you're going to meet your next opportunity or your next client so you could be at a coffee shop you could be in a meeting for another company you could be working alongside someone else you just don't know Um, and I think that personal brand and having that level of transparency and authenticity is such a powerful tool yeah I um I heard years ago and I've never forgotten this is the opportunity of a lifetime is around the corner every week and it's so true and that's why it's important not to get too bent out of shape if you missed out on something but of course yeah you could be meeting your next client or next whatever that you or next strategic alliance and that's why it's so important to turn up you know um you know well dressed and ready to go whenever you um whenever you can I agree and I think also too Sharon like I'm such a person that I don't think that until you're ready 
you don't connect with those particular opportunities. So, you know, like it True. is that level of, in so many times we've heard those stories of, you know, they've been offered that job, you know, a couple of years after they thought they may have gotten it, but it was really because they weren't quite ready to step into it. And I think yeah. there is that level of, um, there's an element that I believe in, in the sense that your style can really transport you and have you ready and confident before maybe you actually believe it yourself. It's part of the process that yeah. is about really paying that picture and that level of consistency on a daily basis for yourself. That even though you're like, I don't know, like, can I go after this job? I'm not really sure if I'm ready, but dressing for the part, it is something that is quite transformative to be able to, yeah, get you ready for it. Yeah, I love it. I love it. This has been the best conversation, Kerry. Thank you so much for giving us your whole hour to share all your wisdom with us. Um, we've got the website in the chat. We'll also put it in the um, in the Facebook feed when um, when we post this online. Um, thank you so much Amazing. again. It's been such a pleasure to be able to interview you and learn so much more about style and how important it is in our lives, Kerry. So. Once again, thank you so much and um, look forward to hopefully one day catching up in the future. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Thanks so much. No problem. Thank you. And we're getting lots of good thanks coming through from everyone. So thank you so much. See you later. Bye. Bye.